Indonesia and Thailand have same point in this group. But what? How do you see this this today's game? How important today's game for you and your team? Yeah, very, very important for both teams. I mean, the team that uh, can manage it to get three points now uh, is already probably qualified, almost qualified to the to the semifinals. That's why it makes the game very important. But uh, again, I mean, we still have two games to play with a clear target. Yeah, to to go to the semifinals and uh, important is to keep concentrate to hold the pressure uh, because of the fans that uh, that Indonesia have they are playing at home but I believe that we have uh, uh, enough quality to to cope with that game. And how well is your preparation for today's game? Yeah, we didn't have so much time to prepare. We have only two days uh, uh, after the last match that we play at home against the uh, Philippines. So it's a lot about uh, resting the players, analyzing the, the videos and finding a good uh, strategy, a good plan, what we believe that we did well. So, and now it's just uh, starting the game and see how the game will go. Okay, thank you coach and good luck for the game.
Hello and a very good afternoon to you from the Galora Bung Karno Stadium in Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia, the home side up against Thailand here in the AFF Mitsubishi Electric Cup 2022. This Group A fixture is a mouth-watering one, a repeat of the final just about a year ago when these two giants of Southeast Asian football did battle in Singapore over two legs. One which ended very much in favour of the ties. There have been many in the media who are framing this as a chance for revenge. Indonesia quite happy just to get something out of this game. Whoever wins this today, if we have an outright winner, will certainly qualify for the next round. And an opportunity as well, a draw could be enough as well to advance to the semi-finals. The players aren't out yet, not many of them anyway. It is an extremely intimidating atmosphere. This is a, a revamped GBK, as it's also known. That uh, certainly in its heyday, when it fit more than 100,000 fans inside, uh, was infamous for the kind of atmosphere uh, it created inside and I can tell you there has been quite the atmosphere created outside as well now we're just hearing news a short while ago that the Thai bus on the way to the stadium was surrounded by Indonesian fans um, who gave them quite the reception shall we say including a slightly cracked window Indonesian fans certainly Showing their support in very different ways. Wonder that will have had any impact. The players professional enough in football in this part of the world. They know how much football means to the supporters. 50,000 fans allowed into the stadium today. I'm told it's a sellout. Always to see these two nations pairing off they have both played two matches each Indonesia have had the easier as it were of the two thus far Shin Tae Yong there's the man in charge is very popular for what he's done to transform the fortunes of the national team in fact the age group teams as well this has got the Youngest squad into the AFF, sorry, the uh, Asian Cup, the 23s. So just to reiterate, Indonesia have beaten Cambodia 2-1. Should have been far more comfortable that day. And then thrashed Indonesia, uh, sorry, thrashed Brunei 7-0. As for Thailand, they thrashed Brunei 5-0. And the other result that caught the eye... They beat Philippines, who are vying for a place in the semi-finals, 4-0 last time out. Russia, this one certainly gets football fans in this region very excited, full of anticipation. It really is one that gets you licking your lips, doesn't it? I was certainly looking forward to this. It's uh, such an exciting game, and uh, you've got two really good coaches at the helm of both these uh, nations. Shin Tae-yong in your picture here, and then... Uh, Mano Polking for Thailand as well. Mm. It's lots of quality on the pitch, lots of quality on the bench, and an incredible atmosphere um, here at uh, the stadium, at the venue. And uh, you know, this is this is uh, one of those matches as a as a footballer you look forward to playing, mm. and you want to be a part of this. You want to be out on the field and uh, and taking in all these sorts of experiences. So uh, I think the players from Thailand will be uh, will be pumped for this, will be excited for this. So will the players from Indonesia. I don't think the Thais will be intimidated too much. Mm. You know, this is uh, a very uh, experienced side. They're uh, experienced heads uh, in that team, so that should uh, help them along. So they're making their way out onto this uh, rather historic field now. We've seen some great matches along the way. The crowd actually went a little bit quiet there because of the build-up. They're suddenly making a lot of noise. Now they will reignite that passion, I'm sure, very shortly indeed. It is going to be a cracking atmosphere here. Lots been said by both coaches. We'll talk about that in a short while. There's Manu Polking, as you can probably see, in his standard 
gear, black shirt and blue jeans, why would you change it if you've been so successful thus far? It's been working for him and uh, it's something he has <laughs> spoken about previously. He doesn't feel the need to uh, change things up, uh, a little bit superstitious uh, in that regard. He's got a few sets of those, I can assure you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, look, uh, he might. He doesn't change his his, uh, his his match day outfits too often. It doesn't look like he changes his uh, match day lineups too often uh, as well. <laughs> you just stole my line there, Russian, because you're exactly right. Um, there's a lot of things he's quite keen on yeah. on keeping the same way, uh, as we'll see that lineup very shortly indeed. Uh, and we'll see that uh, Thailand, of, sorry, Indonesia also are. Could be a very different today as well. Team uh, changes in just a short while after these national anthems. Fifty thousand voices there in unison. Fantastic to hear. The Manapalking ahead of this game said, "This is going to be massive in front of a huge crowd in this magnificent stadium. These are the type of games we want to play in, and it will be a fantastic atmosphere." Well, he's called the fox, Shin Tae Young, and has he made a few surprising changes? There? He did say, "Look out for our lineup." There are six changes from the side. Uh, that beat Brunei. That is not the surprise necessarily. The four survivors, the goalkeeper, Nadeo, Egri Maulana, uh, Rahmat Irianto, uh, Asnawi, the skipper, and Mark Anthony Clock. Um, he's brought back in the likes of uh, Yodi Amat, uh, Witan Sulaiman, Pratama Arhan, and uh, Fakhruddin. Perhaps the two surprises that he might be referring to is Dendi and Jakub Sayuri. With the likes of uh, Ricky Kambuaya not starting today, 
uh, and that perhaps maybe a few people might be wondering uh, what's uh, going on there. Risky Rido, uh, Mo Noam Riamsha, Fabriansha, I should say, Ilyas Pasujevic, Sadil Ramdani, Hansamu Pratama, uh, Pramata rather, and uh, Sharian Abimanyu are the ones who make way. What do you think? Yeah, look, I think first of all, uh, when I looked at that lineup, uh, there's, there's absolutely no way Jakub Sayuri is playing up front uh, on his own. Uh, it was interesting as well that Amat at, at left back. I think he's going to be playing more in a central defensive position. I was looking at that lineup as we have a look at Thailand here, but very quickly for Indonesia, I wonder if they're actually going with a back three. We'll see how, how it goes. Well, Indonesia uh, made lots of changes, but Thailand, as we uh, mentioned earlier, Roshan said he doesn't change too much with his uh, clothing choices, and neither does he with his lineup. Uh, they are only making one change today with Chanarong coming in for Adisak. Um, and uh, that's probably not going to be quite what it is, but um, it's an interesting one because he's gone with two exact same lineups and today just the one change. So one change in three matches. Yeah, it's the, the one change, just, as you mentioned, in there. Chalarong's an interesting one, a young man coming in, a young player coming in, and you know he has uh, quite a good uh, bit of pace on him, mm. um, nice ability with the ball at his feet as well. I'm interested to see where he actually uh, uh, sets up here in this uh, in this formation. You know, could he be playing alongside Terasin up mm. front, or just in behind him perhaps, or could it be Ekanit who actually drops in and playing more of that that central role with Chanarong then uh, moving out to the right hand side. That midfield battle is going to be fascinating. If Indonesia can get to grips with Terathon and Saraj trying to control the tempo of the game for Thailand, uh, that will go some way. Uh, in, in helping Indonesia, I think, have uh, some decent control of the match. Klok and Rahmat Irianto. I wonder if Irianto is going to be playing in central midfield alongside Klok. So when you look at the, the lineup for Indonesia, when you look at the players involved as well, I wonder if there's a sense from Shin Tae-yong of a, a bit of respect being paid to Thailand and the threat that they pose, they are capable of posing. And whether he's gone with a little bit more of a defensive mm. side in that sense, they can still be, of course, attacking in, in certain phases, still get players forward. But with the players that they have out there, I wonder if they're just looking at maybe dropping into a back five at times. We'll see how that uh, how that goes. I mean, but that's my sort of uh, 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 best guess of how Indonesia are going to be setting up when I looked at that starting eleven. Yeah, Thailand get us going in. I was actually just looking at your at your setup here, which is obviously a little bit different from what we saw. And you had Asnawi in that back three yeah. uh, with Jakub Sayu, who I think you're quite pleased to see him because he he has merited a starting spot in a, a bigger game, as it were. You, you've been very impressed with him. I have been very impressed with him. I think whenever he's come on, he's uh, he's made a big impact, he made a huge impact. It does look like it is still going to be a back four from Indonesia. We'll come back to it. Here is Dendi for the Indonesians. And now, Egi Malana. Just got a little bit of a touch there. Witan Sulaiman, hands to his head. Kittipong has had possibly the least of any goalkeeper any action that he's seen so far and almost called into action there yeah so it is a, a 4-4-2 and the surprises that he mentioned he's put Jakob Sayuri into uh, that midfield on the right hand side of it just ahead of Asnawi mm. uh, and then it's Iggy Maulana playing on the left ahead of uh, Pratama Arhan so it's a 4-4-2 Witan and, uh, and Dendi up front Klok and Rahmat Irianto in central midfield for Indonesia, and then that uh, the two in central defence, so Yodi Amat and uh, Fakhrudin. So those are the surprises. Egi, we've seen him start the first uh, couple of matches on the right, yeah. and then look to cut in on his left. This time he's uh, playing on more of his, uh, his natural side in that sense, not as that inverted forward. Yeah, Egi, uh, Snawi and Nadeo are the only three that have started every match so far for Indonesia. Been the, clearly the key players for Shin Tae-yong. Well, listen to that roar. He's on a foul there. And Iggy Marlana. Yeah, good start to this game already. But Indonesia get an opening down the left early on. And then Thailand looking to try and break through. <laughs> Yeah, of course, he's going to be waving his fingers at the referee. Terrific noise, as you'd expect from this crowd. They like the start that their team has already put on. That's interesting, Shin Tae-yong, just uh, swapping things a bit. With that lineup, with the formation, 
And it is uh, Ikanit who uh, is playing closer to uh, Tiresin up front. It is Chanarong who moves out onto the right. There's Asnawi. Captain of this side. Young man as well, only 23, leading his nation. There's his football in Korea. Just a little bit too much on the ball. Well, Rahmat Irianto looking for this man here, Jakub Sayuri, who's forced his way into the starting 11 today. Yeah, and he's, he's really shown his versatility as well. Um, his ability to play on the right, can play on the left. Mm. And it gives uh, Shin Tae Yong those, uh, those options. Terrific pace as well about him. I can see he's very comfortable playing in this right midfield role too. I've watched him with uh, PSM, loves getting forward so quick. It's good quality in the attacking areas with his uh, delivery. Well, there's one man who's also impressed in this tournament, Vaudin Pala, who has his terrific runs down that left-hand side, combined so well with Sasalak. It's, uh, Clear bump in the back from uh, Witan on Tiraton. And already see very quickly Indonesia trying to get red shirts around Tiraton whenever he's in possession of it. Yeah, Tiraton is the leading assist maker for this tournament. Three so far. And inside. Far more inside than he also does uh, for his country, does that for his club. Uh, Ronald Pocky was uh, talking about that. And how he had a chat with uh, Tiraton prior to the tournament. About doing that as well for the national team. They're yeah, going to be interesting as well just to observe Egi Maulana and how he, he fits in on the left of this midfield four. What sort of effectiveness uh, he has on that side of the pitch. Having to do uh, a lot of the work on the right here with uh, Sasalaken, Bordin Pala, and the link up they have on the left for Thailand. Really good understanding. Chanarong there. Yeah, started off nice and aggressive, Indonesia. And quickly looking to close down these Thai players in possession. I wonder as well whether we get much of an opportunity to see Asnawi pushing forward or whether he's sort of just been told to play a bit more attention to the spaces in behind him and not to vacate his, his right back role too much. Concerned Leave a lot more of the running to, yeah. to Jakub Sayuri to get forward into advanced areas. Perhaps concerned with the fact that Bodin Fala loves to run into mm. spaces in behind the opposition defence. Well, that's going to be a nice battle, that one, Bodin versus. Asnawi. Here's Clock. Now Rahmat Irianto. Yori Amat. Freshly minted Indonesian international. And he's had experience, of course, in La Liga and the Premier League. A lot of excitement when he came on board. Now trying to force their way through Dendi there with that little run. Cross in from Egi Maulana. Oh, they're asking for a hand ball. Jakub Sayuri hit that confidently. It was a good hit. And that's a foul by Asnawi. Yeah, decent ball whipped in by uh, Egi Maulana. And a nice run by Jakub Sayuri. Making the kind of run we normally see from Egi on the other side of the pitch. He moves uh, into the penalty area to attack crosses from the left. Just comes off his shin, and he's never going to get a handball for that. There's nothing wrong with the arm position of uh, Kritsada. <laughs> Where's he supposed to put it? It looks like it, it's come off the side of his body anyway. It's a nice brisk start, though, isn't it, for the Indonesians? Yeah, they've been very uh, 
aggressive off the ball, they've been quick to close down and they're closing down together. Brave in possession, let's try and create chances. Now the man we talked about earlier, board in Pala. Just showed a bit too much of the ball, as now he does enough. Yeah, they're working hard to, to double up here, Indonesia. That's just because of how good Thailand individually, how good they are in those situations. Borden with the ability to take it past a defender in those one-on-ones. There's a good chance he's going to beat his man. So he need that extra covering defender. Ekanit is well offside. Completely mistimes his run in behind. We just saw an example of that. There's Borden. To try and get into the penalty box. So now he had to come out and, and help uh, Rahmat Irianto. Had to recover, I should say. Borden wins the ball back. Ooh, that was a, a challenge there by Asnawi. Might put himself in the process. And he just played himself into trouble with that first bit of uh, attempt at a piece of skill to take it around. Borden was too smart for it. Just uh, waving the referee off in terms of that question about whether he needs treatment. Just taking a knock from uh, Ikanit on the follow through. Thailand really haven't had anything like this kind of opposition so far in terms of intensity coming at them in this tournament. No, they haven't. Uh, but in a little look, I, I think this is again something they, they would have expected coming into yeah. this match. I'm sure it is something they would have been uh, driven into these players. Yes, Pratama Arhan, I haven't seen too much of him thus far. Too much on that one for the man in front of him, Egi Molana. He's a man with high expectations. There was a video that's been circulating around, actually taken in September, of Shin Taeyong training the under-23s with a stick in his hand and whacking the feet of his, uh, of his players when they're not following his instructions. It was taken in uh, quite good spirit as well, but he wants things done in a certain way, doesn't he, <laughs> Shin Tae-yong? Um, interesting. I mean, I think there's a certain generation of uh, football <laughs> fan out there who, be, who would appreciate yeah. such methods. <laughs> who probably feel that a number of players do deserve the, uh, the old stick. <laughs> Having said that, I, I saw it. An ad that uh, Shin Tae Yong was involved in recently for some kind of coffee brand, okay. and he was actually dancing in that in that, wow. in that video. He's got a fun side He's to got him. A fun <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. quite a sight to see uh, <laughs> Shin Tae Yong pulling off his little dance. This was an in an Indonesian ad. Yeah, this is, but that's you know interesting because that's how big it's become. Yeah, when the national coach is in ads. That's right. Yeah, you know, we, we, we saw it previously with Park Hang-seo in yes, Vietnam. Yes, And how he became a superstar then, mm. essentially was involved in, in that sort of stuff. Yeah. I don't remember seeing Park Hang-seo dance. We've seen him jiggle around when <laughs> things go his way. <laughs> and you've mentioned, of course, that he's going to continue setting up, his, using that name of his, after he retires yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, he's looking to Park Hang-seo after he takes a bit of a break. Mm. His contract is done with uh, Vietnam. He's looking to take a bit of a break and then uh, set up a football academy. Oh, that's not a bad ball, is it? Up towards uh, Tirasin. Looking to further consolidate his position at the top of the all-time scoring charts in the AFF Championship. 22 goals now. Here's Tiraton, his old buddy. He's been supplying those goals. Many of them anyway. And just an example here of where he can quite often be the very deepest of players. Sometimes he, he just drifts right up to top. He's just everywhere, isn't he? Tiraton. Tiraton, yeah. And, and again, he's, a, he's sort of that link in midfield for them. What's and he done there? He's got that uh, understanding with uh, with Sarac. You know, whenever Tiraton drops in, Sarac number six then has to be their player who's further forward in midfield for Thailand. But Tiraton, when they are at their, their best Thailand, when they're comfortable in possession, when they start to get into their rhythm and they're a little bit more dominant, you see Teraton moving out to the left, mm. moving further forward yeah. and then, you know, creating chances from a more advanced area. So now at the moment where Teraton is, Indonesia will be quite happy with that. As long as they're aware of his ability to 
pick out those passes, those diagonal balls out into wider areas. And again, just saw with that replay, red shirts around the blue as quick as they can. Doubling up, working hard for each other. Here he is again, Tiraton. Tana wrong. Supanan trying to get it up to Ekanit. We've got the Indonesians right on top of them. This is perhaps what Philippines fans were wanting from their side to be a little bit more proactive in that sense, closing down the ties. We really saw enough of that from them. Yeah, not at all, but look, a, a very different game. Look at the reaction there, Mano Polking, demanding some answers here. Well, he's not happy. Referee today, Mohamed Khalid from Saudi Arabia. The fourth official is obviously copying a bit of it as well. Assuming that's the uh, get back into your technical area. Yeah, I think he was. Uh, he wanted a free kick taken from the right position. He saw one of the games. Was it Indonesia mm. game? Stealing Which yards. Where the the player throw was in. allowed to. Yeah. By quite some distance. Now these are the kind of deliveries which can cause problems. So. Oh. Not. For a second there, I thought that they would misjudge that. You see better from Tiraton. Yeah. It's good from Indonesia. You know, they, they, they pick out the timing of uh, when to drop off well. Not the best of deliveries from Tiraton. Nadeo having his angles covered. There was a similar position for that free kick for the opening goal against the Philippines. A, a wonderful header from uh, Tiraton. Sarac, Thailand seeing a bit more of the ball at the moment. Chanarong. And now they come forward. Has that beaten the offside trap? Doesn't matter because Kitty Pong saw the danger. Oh, it hasn't beaten the trap. Yeah, just mistiming the run in behind. That's good proactive goalkeeping by Kittipong. That's what you want your goalkeeper to switch on. When you're playing such a high line, your goalkeeper needs to have a, a little bit more of an aggressive starting position. Needs to be ready for balls in behind that defence. Lovely from Tiraton. Or swung in. Supanan. Sayuri. Here's Asnawi. Lovely work from Indonesia. Back to Sayuri. Oh, that's a wonderful ball in and Dendi's header. Well, well wide. No real power in either. Yeah, quick, smart play by Indonesia. Working opening down the right. Witan just uh, drops off and Plays it into Sayuri, who's given that space by Kritsala. Forced to vacate his central defensive position to come out to Jakub Sayuri. Still can't prevent the cross from coming in. Good accurate cross as well. Finds the head of, uh, the, uh, of uh, Dendi. You just see that it's that slightly more defensive aspect that I was talking about mm. and why I, I, I 
I thought it might have been a back five at times with uh, Jakub Sayuri. We see in certain phases where Thailand do have the ball. Asnawi actually drops in closer to Fakhrudin and, and, and Ahmad. Jakub then drops back here. Uh, and that's because of the positioning of either Sasalak or, or Bodin Fala, who are being asked to get in quite narrow as well in those attacking areas. And that just means Asnawi has got to tuck in to central defence as well. Let's we'll see if we can get a shot of, of what I'm talking about as the game progresses. I mean, what's what's characterised a lot of the Thailand attacks in previous games has been down that left-hand side, the two of them combining yeah. so well. And, and it's either, you know, you, you just see the positions. It's either Bodin Fala who moves inside into a narrow position or mm. earlier it was Sasalak. So yep. they do take turns just to ask different questions of the opposition defence. Let's just have a look at this here. This is what I'm talking about. Just take away your eye from the ball. This is that sort of back five in a sense I was talking about with us now we just drifting in. Yeah, and Sasalak has kind of drifted inwards, hasn't he? There's Bodin Pala. Here is Tiraton. There we go again. It's that five with the four in front of them. As Thailand start to get a little bit more dominant in possession. Quite wary of it. You can see, understand now why Shin Tae-yong has gone with the Jakub Sayuri. And... Uh, Asnawi, this is two players on the right. Here's Bonipala, and then, as you mentioned, Sayuri also in those areas to help out. It takes a lot of concentration and communication. For Indonesia, you're tracking lots of movement off the ball. Got to be switched on. Yes, Supernan for Thailand on this right hand side. Chanarong. Now Kritsada. Having to plot their way through here, Thailand. In the end, they can't do it. it was, uh, Sayuri was looking to get that ball up to Witan Sulaiman. They start again. Supanan. That comes off Pratama Arhan. Uh, you can start to see now Indonesia dropping deeper and deeper. And Thailand getting into that flow of the game. The usual passing rhythm. Putting pressure on the opposition. Dendi doing his bit. Sasalak, now boarded. Oh, that's a lovely ball to Sasalak. Clock is in the way, it will be a corner. Yeah, that's a, a really nice battle. Down that side of the pitch, Sasalak and Bordin up against uh, Jakub Sayuri and uh, Asnawi. Nice bit of movement, interchange of positions just now between Bordin and Sasalak. Shaking off the attentions of... Uh, Jakob Enos now eh? Interesting the camera has panned on two danger men. Tiraton to take the corner. Tirison. Will he receive? It's not him. On target. Panso wants to get involved. That's whipped in with good pace. He's unmarked. I just feel he should get a much better connection on that. Indonesia, I think, get away with it. Just go to sleep with the... Uh, was it Bordin with the header? I thought it was. Bordin Fala might have been at the, at, the, at the near post attacking that. That is Borden for sure. <laughs> Here's Tiraton. Mm. 
nice tight game at the moment. Yeah, I think it's been very interesting from that uh, tactical perspective. And said as now we, you know, normally we're used to seeing him mm. just bomb forward and yeah. get himself into those advanced areas. And it does again, as I said, we're looking at that lineup, the selection, and the way that they set up. Perhaps a bit of uh, respect being paid to the quality that Thailand have. Yeah, effectively, it's uh, the man that many people thought would come into the side or return to the side today, Marcelino Ferdinand. And perhaps because of his defensive abilities as well, Jakub Sayuri, that, that's probably yeah. why he's been preferred, right? Well, I think they, they understood that this was going to be a different game, obviously mm. different opposition, understood that Thailand were going to have a, a bit more of the ball. Horses for courses? They were, yep, exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. Well, here comes something for, yeah. for Thailand to, uh, to be a little bit wary of. It's the Pratama Arhan throw. He's blowing his nose as well into that towel <laughs> as he <laughs> dries the ball. Take any moisture off it, see if you can get as much grip on it as you can. Uh, putting a little bit of stickiness on, <laughs> on the ball, perhaps. Good luck with the header. That's, that's a nice image, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, uh, trajectory for you on this one, Russian. What do you think? Oof. Lots of pace and power on it. Flat. Low trajectory, flat. Here Lots we go. of pace. Oh, it's got elevation on it. Oh, that was right towards the keeper, Ketipong. Ball in from Pratama Ahan. Oh, Egi Malana with the header over. The flag had been raised anyway. What a weapon. Yeah, again, I mean, the, the cross is uh, it's not bad too from Pratama Ahan. Delivered onto the head of Eggy, off balance. Mm. Oh, a couple of Thai defenders around him. But that's what that throw-in brings. Uh, yeah, you just pack, because you know you can get that sort of distance. Mm. And, and the pace of the throw-in as well. Little uh, nutmeg there from Supanan through the legs of Pratama Arhan. Chalarong was trying to apologise to Yodi Ahmad, who wasn't interested in any sort of apology, just got on with the game. Here come Thailand with Tirasin. Now Krit Sada. Thailand. Have to be patient here. Sarach. It's like a quarterback, isn't he? Tiraton, mm. the way he's playing. Ekanet. will be a goal kick. See, the thing is, Thailand, we talked about their changes earlier, the lack of, or lack mm, of lack changes. Of, yeah. They're not going to change their way of playing no. for any opposition. They're going to go out there and try and do exactly this. That's how they like to play football. That's how they want to play football. That's, yep. for lack of a better word, Hawking's philosophy. <laughs> um, but you, you see sides sort of adjusted that. We've seen Indonesia with their lineup, with their setup. You know, change your game a little bit. Well, that was risky, wasn't it? Here's Witan Sulaiman. It's a great ball through. It's just too far away from Egi Molana. Delightful work from the youngsters. Here's Pratam Arhan. What an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, it, it is the right idea. It really is the right decision here from Witan to play in that sort of ball. Just puts it into the space. Ahead of Eggy. Just can't quite get there. I mean, it's really the only option, the only mm. angle available to him. Lovely work. <laughs> so Rachmat gets in there. I was going to say, forget doubling up. There are two players <laughs> in there. Borin still found a bit of a way through. Rachmat was there to close off the inside space. And you know uh, how dangerous, how important an opposition player is when you start to hear him get those jeers from the crowd. <laughs> Clock. Oh, Looks like he missed that. Goryama has to send that back to his skipper. Here's Witan Sulaiman. 
Someone gets onto the ball. And now clock advances. Molana taking a more central position. Pratama Arhan. Still with Indonesia. Witan. Pratama Arhan with the cross. Kutsada gets it away just about, only as far as Dendi who doesn't control it. Is following the uh, movement of Tirasin. That's Fakrudin. Everywhere you go, I go. <laughs> Even though it was in the opposition half. Turreton is getting a little irritable. It's going to Dendi cut it out. Him and Turreton coming together there. Way by Pratama Arhan. Now brought in. Oh, wonderful work from him. Still brought in. Brought down by Asnawi. Asking for the card <laughs> on the Indonesian skipper. <laughs> Lovely bit of skill from Borden. Then an acceleration. Really smart play. Those the challenges uh, coming in from Asnawi. He just panics. Pokes it away from him. Love how he puts both his hands in the air, <laughs> even though that's it. Kind of went with both feet as well into yeah. the challenge. That's now he. I'm not sure what he was trying to say, like with the hand, yeah. <laughs> and then wags his finger. It's the auto appeal. It's something <laughs> I talk about. Footballers have this. Default, is it? Even when you know <laughs> you've messed up, you've committed a foul, even when you know it's come off you last, you're still going <laughs> to appeal to the referee. It's, it's just. That's what it is. Is that ingrained in all of you? Yeah, you just, you just got to accept that fact. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a very dangerous position here for Indonesia. Tiraton and Sarac standing over the ball. In swinger or out swinger? What are we going to get? You'd think it's going to be. The senior man saying, I'm going to take this. In Tiraton. Yeah, you think so. I I'd probably go along with that. Wow, Sarac, who probably should have left it. It should have been Tiraton. <laughs> <laughs> Based on that, that delivery. <laughs> If he was actually going for goal, goal for go going for goal there. Wow, it's a bit of a strange one. First half an hour for you. I mean, it's there's been a nice. There's both sides have had their sort of chances. I think probably the Indonesia yeah. feel that they probably should, if anything, have the better opportunities, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, Indonesia playing on the counter attack, yeah. and that's where they've looked uh, uh, pretty dangerous at mm. times. They have had a couple of openings. Uh, we saw. Just a couple of minutes before this, that pass from Witan. Yeah. Eggy just couldn't quite make the most of it, couldn't quite get there. But, uh, yeah, I think Shin Taeyong will be satisfied with the way things have mostly gone so far. Uh, you're never going to completely eliminate the opposition threat, especially yeah. the opposition of this uh, level, of this quality. I mean, Bordin, even though he's got two, three players around him at times, he still finds a way through. Yeah, he's been uh, very good so far, Bordin Pala. And the exciting thing is there's a, a lot of talent on both benches as well to call upon. As and when the need arises. Draw for both these sides 
would be enough to see them through to the next round. Unless Cambodia do something quite special. They'll both be on seven points. Cambodia playing Brunei, they expected to win that. Well, Philippines would definitely be eliminated. Philippines would be eliminated for sure. Yep. And then it would be uh, Cambodia playing Thailand in their last game. The conventional wisdom is that draw is enough, but Cambodia have confounded the critics already in this competition by beating the Philippines, which is why they find themselves in that precarious position now. And they'll be hoping there's a winner in this one. Ideally, it is Thailand because they still have to play Indonesia in the last round of fixtures. Yet yeah, another free kick for Thailand here. This time it is going to be Tiraton. On across to Supanan. Tirasin. Here's Sasalak. <laughs> Look who it is. It's uh, Tiraton right at the back there. Everything seems to be going through him, doesn't it? Yeah, he's that, uh, that hub for them in, in, in midfield. Tiraton. Deep line playmaker. Extra man in possession when they try and build out from the back. Incredible when you consider that the vast majority of his career has been spent as a as a right back. Sorry, left back, I should say. And he's just fit seamlessly in. I know he does it for his club, but this is yeah. He just looks so comfortable, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's such a good uh, a technical player. Obviously, got good technical quality, but. Great tactical uh, idea of, of the game, uh, awareness and, and understanding of what's required from him in the, in the different roles. Very intelligent footballer, you know, he can play in those different roles and still be so effective. And it's, it's something he, he was used to as well playing when he was playing in Japan. He did often, he drift, did often in, drift inside. You know, yeah. he start as a left back, but in the, those phases of possession, he mm. would move in field mm. and, and play as a central player. Sarachu Yen here for Thailand. Right across to Bordin. The crowd just upping the noise again. The Supanan. Pansa on the ball here. Chanarong. Given that one away, and so have Indonesia straight away. Sasalak. Indonesia just waiting for their moments. There you go. Here comes Asnawi. He's got a few options here. And he's not played any of them. The first time we've seen us now, we get that far forward. I yeah. uh, just had his uh, options shut down. And then over played the pass into uh, Witan. Uh, Thailand as well, I think they'll be pretty happy with uh, the way things have gone so far. You know, they coming away from home, up against determined, hard-working opposition. They've had their opportunities as well. And for the most part, they've kept uh, Indonesia in their own half. We just saw the... Uh Attempt so far, three to one in favour of the Indonesians. 
It's been short on opportunities thus far this match. Here's Ekanet, just drifted onto this right hand side for a bit where he's been playing the previous two matches. Oh, we saw something similar here. How has he missed that? What a chance there. Witan Sulaiman threw on goal, took the shot early. Oh, two massive errors there. One from uh, Kittipong here. Not oh, quite sure what he was doing, taking so much time on the ball, and then he's just been bailed out. The second error was here from Witan. Was he just far too casual what? with the finish? He was peeling away already. Oh, have a look at that. He, know how, he knows how big a miss that was. What an opportunity for Indonesia. Well, just in the last game, Hansamu had oh, a huge yeah. miss right in front of goal. What do you, I mean, where are you putting this in see, terms of that one? See, I wonder if someone's going to do a little bit of a ranking thing now and try and figure <laughs> out who's, who's had the worst miss, whether it was Hansamu or... Or with that, with that there, wow. and the context of the, the context, game as yeah. well. I'm, this is this is bigger in that sense. And uh, this was uh, that was an identical goal, by the way, in, in almost every aspect. Shawal Anwar scoring against uh, Cambodia, uh, Kyo, uh, Laos, Laos, and it was Kyo Don who uh, also did what Kittipong did there, which, which was uh, yeah inexplicable. Now he'll be absolutely desperate to try and make up for it. A chance to make amends for that. Again, the, the first touch on this occasion from Witan was poor, but they almost got in behind once more. But he was through. He had time. He could have <laughs> advanced further. Yeah, he could have. But look, I mean, Whoa. once you get past the goalkeeper, you've got the whole goal to sort of aim, aim for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's one of those so difficult to explain well, how he's actually missed that. Maybe he was too casual with the finish. Uh, he can see uh, the funny side of it. Certainly Just the reg about. regional media had a, a big laugh at Han Samu. Uh, they were comparing him to uh, the big star on the national stage, Darwin Nunes, for a miss he made earlier in the season. But uh, You know, it, it happens to the best of him. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I've seen a few comparisons with... Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo as well, who had a miss like that for Manchester United, I think. His first uh, spell with the club. I'm not sure how much that's going to make someone feel better, but yeah. The thing is, Hansam can say I was a centre-back, so I was yeah. making a clearance, just in the wrong penalty box. But That, that sounds like you're, you're kind of... You're not... You're thinking Witans is worse then. I think in the context of yeah. the game, the context of who they're up against, you know, Oh, it's charged down. Yeah, I mean, certainly to be able to take the lead against Thailand. You know, when 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 Hansamu missed his, it was two 0 against Brunei. Yeah. And Indonesia were really dominant. Mm. Ten men Brunei team. It's a game they were going to win anyway. Here, yeah. you, you have to take your chances. Yeah. Up against Thailand, right? And how often do you get chances like that in any game of football? Kitty, I'm not sure what he was thinking, especially after Kyodon tried the other day. It just looked like, you know, two big mistakes, right? Kittipong with that. And both yeah. of them, both players, the goalkeeper and Witan, both looked far too casual. Yeah. What a, talk about the <laughs> biggest of let-offs there. And what was strange was there was this moment of silence almost when he had that opportunity. I don't think anyone sort of expected that to happen. No. Well, that's a man, as I said, who, who was, who's barely been called into action. And sometimes you've seen that with goalkeepers, right? Who who haven't had anything to do. It, it, normally the context of a single match. Yeah. But he's had this over almost two and a half matches now. Yeah. What was it against the Philippines? He didn't have any saves to make for about 62 minutes. Yeah. And then had a couple of relatively easy ones. Yeah. Almost 70% of the ball at the moment, Thailand. Still not able to make any inroads. Here's Pratama Arhan for Indonesia. 
Yeah, Chanarong just seems to be struggling a little bit. I don't think he's had as much of a, an influence in this game as he would have liked. Oh, so Paul King would have hoped, perhaps. Yeah, but given his chance today, hasn't he, the 21-year-old? I just wonder what might happen at the start of the second half. Still just a handful of caps for Chanarong. Now, the Pratama Arhan throw in. You'd think he'd vary it, maybe. Just uh, the last one was high and handsome. Let's see this one. It'll be low and threatening. Full of pace. Let's see what he does. Much closer to the goal this time as well. Yeah, I think there was uh, enough of a uh, warning given by the referee just before the throw-in was taken, telling the players he had his uh, eyes on them. Having said that, I can't quite see what was wrong with uh, what Yoriyama was doing. Mm. Didn't see anything wrong with that. Yeah, that's why I'm much... Uh, <laughs> he's just being told to shut up as well. Yeah, <laughs> that's his <laughs> captain <laughs> telling him to keep quiet. Here's Bonipala. We're into the final minute of this first half. He's just trying to charge down Kutsada. It wasn't the best of back passes in the day, was there? Now, oh, that was a foul. Give it as a foul. Chanarong. And look at the position in front of him of Tirasin, it was great, could have been set free there. Oh, I mean, really, uh, I mean, it's just such a soft one. I, again, it's not one I, I saw too much wrong with. Opening up again in the final minute of play. Well, I'm going to scratch that last Pratama Arhan throw because it the whistle went very early on. So let's see what he decides. He's gone for two high ones so far. We've brought in some of the big guns here. Kitipon got something on it. I'm not sure exactly where the foul was. Yoriyama again looks bemused by this. <laughs> what? I'm not again. I mean, he's just holding his position. Maybe there was a bit of an arm into the back of Sasalak. Maybe that's what he spotted. There was certainly nothing wrong with the first one mm. that he, he blew his whistle for. <laughs> <laughs> this is the point. <laughs> Shin Taeyong's making the, making the point there that, uh, you know, it's twice now where he hasn't seen much wrong with it. So, we've had that first half. No goals so far. One of the very few, I think, that's, uh, that has come to the end of the 45 without a goal thus far yeah but it's been quite an intriguing first half of football you know just as the way the two sides have set up and how they've gone about it in this match Indonesia will feel they should have the lead going into half time mm. but uh, for large parts of that first half I think Thailand were, were very much in control Shin Tae Yong still having a word with the fourth official they're not uh, too happy with some of the decisions that have gone against his team second half again should be fascinating Indonesia have seen very little of the ball but boy have they had a guilt edged opportunity not taken by Witan Sulaiman that is probably going to haunt him for a little bit at halftime here at the Galore Bunkano. It's Indonesia nil, Thailand nil.
players back on the pitch here at the Galoro Bunkano Stadium in Jakarta, Indonesia, playing Thailand here in the AFF Mitsubishi Electric Cup 2022. We built this one up as a, a really big clash between two giants of the region. No goals so far. Who do you think would be the happier of the two coaches coming into the second half? I think they'll both be satisfied with certain aspects of, uh, of, of how things have gone in general for their respective teams. Uh, you know, for for quite a bit of that first half, I think Thailand had good control of it. Obviously, Indonesia had the biggest opportunity, but that was a mistake from the goalkeeper, uh, Kitipong. Thailand let off the hook with that. Massively. But, uh, you know, again, I said the context of it, them being away from home, playing against a, a fired-up side opposition who are determined to try and get a result out of this in front of their home fans. Mm. Uh, expect a tough, tough match, and, and and so far in that context, I think he'll be pretty happy, Mano Poking, with the way things have gone in that first half. They'll try and want to add a bit more quality in the attacking areas in the second, um, and it looks like they have made those those changes to try and address a few things. Yeah, we're just getting that. Does look like Sanrawat is the player who's come on for Thailand. There you go, China Rom, you mentioned not really making the most of his opportunity. He's replaced Hassan Rawat. So Hassan Rawat comes on. Let's see if he can uh, add a little bit more to that attack for Thailand. Yeah, the tough first half, Chanarong. I think the right change to make. I mean, someone else in there. Interesting, though, that he's gone with uh, San Rawat. Mm. Rather than uh, Adisak. Maybe it's a conditioning issue, a fitness issue. San Rawat has... Uh... Well, we've not had too much time thus far. I think, from, I think from Indonesia's perspective, it's also a case of, you know, in the second half, not um, dropping off too deep, mm. not making themselves, you know, not putting themselves in a situation where, where Thailand have a lot of control, a lot of dominance in possession, so much so that they're forced to just drop off into their own penalty area almost. I think that's something Shin Tae-yong will have looked at uh, address at half-time, play a little bit higher, try and put a bit more pressure in Thailand in their own half. Now, Sanrawat, 33 years of age. Many odd caps for his country. There's Tiraton. You can see he was trying to play that up to Sanrawat. He was born in Pala. And we'll turn to Lyman there, who had contenders for miss of the tournament in the first half here's Asnawi lovely play with Ansu Laiman clock goes wide to Asnawi Dendi in there still Asnawi they're asking for handball and they get it no argument at all from the Thai skipper Tiraton, it's a penalty. Well, just listen to that roar. His arms perhaps out, extended away from his body. And the referee, once he sees that, really has no other choice but to blow his whistle for the penalty. One of the rare times we've seen us now we get forward. And look what happens. <laughs> Good driving run into the area. Opened it up for his, uh, a shot on his left foot. There was really no argument coming from any of yeah. the Thai players. What a start this could be for Indonesia. Start to the second half, I mean. <laughs> no. 
They have one guilt-edged opportunity. They have another one here. It's clock. And this crowd. Just wait for that noise if he puts this in. Face a picture of concentration. Well, Bodin is uh, doing his part to tell the goalkeeper where he thinks it's going to go. He makes no mistake, Clark. He scored a couple days ago in their last match. He scored here again. Indonesia in front. Thailand have conceded their first goal of the tournament. Well, the goalkeeper, Kittipong, went in the direction he was told to by Bodin, who was standing behind Clark. But no problem for Clock. A big penalty, big moment. Here's another look at it. His arms are extended away from his body. Tiraton. It is the correct call made by the referee. And it's really well put away. Straight down the middle. And this is the thing with, uh, with defenders that I, that I don't like when they're blocking shots. I feel like when you face up to a shot, your arms naturally are by your side or you can put them behind your mm. back as we see a lot of players do these days yep. but when you sort of turn away from the shot as Tiraton did there Isn't then your, your arms tend to yeah go up to anyway, come right? up. yeah do you think a yellow card is fair because that would indicate that he's, he's there's almost an intent in there isn't there I, th I think it's uh, a situation in there for, for a referee because it's that shot at goal the arm has come out away from his body is preventing yeah. potentially you'd think the penalty's punishment enough well all that matters is that indonesia are in front and uh, well the cynics might suggest they should have been in front anyway by now with that chance for witan Sulaiman. so either way they'll be delighted with this That was well taken by, by Clock, that penalty. Pure concentration, wasn't it, from him? Here's Jakub Sayuri. Now, we don't want to get way ahead of ourselves, but in the last AFF Championship, just a year ago, Indonesia were grouped with Vietnam. Those were the two outstanding favourites to go through. Malaysia was the other one. And everyone, the conventional wisdom, had Vietnam finishing top between Indonesia and Malaysia finishing second. They confounded the critics and finished top of the group, thereby having a what was considered to be a slightly easier semi-final. Obviously, by virtue of finishing top, you put it place second in the other group. And as things stand now, they give themselves a really good opportunity of finishing top here. Still some way to go. They still have to play the Philippines. Thailand have Cambodia. Somewhere in the back of their minds, that would be a real bonus. If they can avoid what it looks to be like Vietnam on the other side. Still, we're around the halfway mark of this tournament, the group stages anyway. I'm sure fans are playing out these permutations, aren't they? Yeah, I'm sure they already are. The thing is, with, from Indonesia, as I said, for them, you, you wanted to see from uh, Indonesia in the second half stepping up a little bit more, being a bit more aggressive. And, and that's exactly what they did. That's where they got that penalty from. I suppose the idea may well have been to keep it stabilised and not yeah. concede in the first half. Here you go. They'll come forward again. Jakub Sayuri. And they, and they were fairly solid, weren't they? I mean, they, while Thailand they had much were. of the ball, they didn't do enough or much with it. Yeah, not much in the way of, I think, real clear-cut opportunities. Yeah. Here's Ekanet. Really poor cross from him. Not something Thailand are particularly used to at this level, being the trailing. Uh, couldn't it be uh, really interesting to see how they overcome this. 
Thailand. Almost needs a bit of a reset here and mm. to get going again. It's a bit of a hit that they've taken. Well, they conceded just the one goal in the group stages last time out. So they never trailed at all in the group stages. They have only trailed once in the last tournament, and that was against Indonesia in the second leg of the final. Indonesia opening the scoring through Ricky Kambuaya in the seventh minute getting a couple of goals in the second half but they were already 4-0 up from the first leg very very comfortable this is a different scenario for them unusual here's Asnawi Referee's given that for a tug on Asnawi's shorts, but it, both players have yeah. had a good <laughs> grab at each other's uh, jerseys. Benefit of doubt going uh, Indonesia's way. Goal scorer, clock out with the free kick. Indonesia looking for a second and that's straight. Yeah, get it up. Yeah, it's not getting enough whip on it. Get doing well there. Take charge of his area. Has that aggression pressing higher up. Klopp, yes, he gives away a, a, a free kick, but a sign of just how much higher up the pitch Indonesia are in this second half. Looking to engage in um, all these advanced areas when they can. Tiraton for Thailand. Samra White. Now Sadac. Saslam gets it up to the danger man, Borden Pala. Things going nicely for Indonesia here. Some frustration creeping in now for the ties. Shin Taeyong talked about hard work required today. Here's that penalty again. He felt that they had done their utmost to get to the level that he felt they were ready for Thailand. So it doesn't matter who scores the goals. As long as they do their job, playing the system that I want. He's been very happy with the work done so far. You know this thing about, uh, oh, I think we're going to see Sadil Ramdani come on for Indonesia, but this thing about just looking at Klock's penalty, and players hitting it down the middle, it's quite an effective thing. Mm. But you can keep your nerve. Oh, Eggy is being helped off here. I didn't see what happened to him. Well, that is a bit of a blow for Indonesia. And they'll be hoping it's nothing too serious and they'll be back for the next game. 
Sadil, Sadil Ramdani, who had a good game against uh, Brunei. He's on. Yeah, a bit of a concern for Indonesia going forward if Nagi uh, Maulana. This injury is uh, a serious one because he has been an important player for Shin Tae Yong. One who tends to start matches. Yeah, he started every game so far. Yeah. On his Indonesian side. So uh, Ramdani plays his football in Sabah, the 23 year old. Into no caps. And he just smashes that away. And uh, just not quite clicking yet for, for Thailand when they do have it. Again, that pass from uh, Sarak was a little bit weird. Yeah, that just tells you everything you need to know right now about where Thailand are on the hour mark. And it's just lost their way a little bit, lost their momentum. Talking and talked about not underestimating the Indonesians. Knowledge, their strength, their strong players. I mentioned some of them by name as well. Jordi Amat. It's got Egi Molana. Return to Lyman. So a special mention for Marcelino, who is on the bench today. Here is Dendi. That's gone the way of uh, Thailand, has it? Interesting one. A free kick awarded to Thailand. Well, that was a foul the other way. Yeah, anything. I mean, looked like he had a hold of uh, Dendi's shirt and then uh, was tripped over by Sasalak Dendi. Continues. Pratama. Late challenge on him. Red card is shown by the referee. That's why there was a massive roar. Well, it's gone from bad to worse now for Thailand. Sanrawan has only been on the pitch from the start of the second half. Has to go. Yeah, it was a bad challenge. It really was mistimed. I'm going to have to take a closer look at... Oh, that's a horrible challenge from oh. Sandra Watt. He put his hand up immediately. That's not going to stop the referee, is it? What's he doing there? Taking I mean, really, he's just let his team down. He's just come on to try and make yeah. an impact in a positive way. Well, Jurathon's come across all the way just to pat him on the back. But when you look at that challenge, uh, Sadil completely taken out. Having seen that now in the replay and how bad it was, Roshan, in even more, in more gory detail, that's deserved red card. Yeah, yeah? there he is apologising to his bench. He knows he's messed up. Instead of being patted on the back by Thirathon, it, it, I think he needs a bit of that Shin Yong with the stick treatment for that challenge. That's a horrible challenge it by Sandra Wat. It is a terrible one. Referee had no hesitation. Well, Indonesia, I mean, they're so well placed now. Half an hour to go in this match. Thailand are going to have to call upon every ounce of strength here to try and haul themselves back into this game. I wonder whether we're going to see any a personnel change here from Mona Porking.
Dundee. A little bit of luck there to get to Witan Suleiman as he kept that in. They're looking to press on the advantage here in Indonesia. Yeah, they are. I mean, uh, in such a good position now, Indonesia. Got that goal, playing a little bit more aggressively in their position. High up the pitch. Now with the extra man. Here's Witan. Sasala clears. They're a little bit nervy at the back now, Thailand. Yeah, it's really important now. This is a very important uh, spell for Indonesia. They, they can't let up. Mm. They can't go easy. They need to put Thailand under pressure. They take advantage of uh, this nerviness that they have at the moment. This, this period of uncertainty. He has bored in Pala. This is a real test of resolve now for Mana Polking and his men. It doesn't change much for Thailand in terms of the back four, the midfield four. Yeah. And there's no player that's sort of been removed from those units. It's it's up front now. Uh, Tirasin's uh, all on his own. They've got Horaman, they've got Adisak. Can still come in. They uh, have to sacrifice someone else. Behind him. What will he do? Yes, Asalak. To board in Pala. So these are two sides that have had the most number of shots in the tournament so far after two matches. See too many attempts today. Indonesia, though, have got that all important goal from a penalty. Oh, he puts a cross in. Hey, hey, hey. Someone wasn't pleased. Sasalak now. Hey, hey. Have a corner here. Yeah, I think just uh, players encouraging each other to stay focused. They switched on. They set piece situations, an opportunity for, for Thailand. Get themselves back level. That's cleared away quite nicely by Fakhruddin. Tiraton. Now Saraj. Teasing ball in. Is that going to be a corner? Yes, it is. I think the last touch coming off uh, Yodi Ahmad. There you go. And in swing up from Tiraton. Lurking at the back post. Got another corner here. That's good. At least he was alert to that. Dendi making sure he tracked the run off uh, Pansa. Focus there on Mano Porking. His next move. He 
noticed these uh, referees, the ones from the, the Middle East have come in to this tournament, have been very clear on their sort of instructions and, and how they regard these set pieces and how they want it to be sort of carried out, aren't they? Yeah, there's, there's always almost a, the pre-corner kick uh, meeting. They're opting to just push that away rather than perhaps catch it. He just wants to make his uh, stance very clear, I think, the referee, what he's looking out for. Which is it's good, no? Yeah, that's good communication. Yeah. Supanan. Now Tiraton. Turn to the fullback. Ekanit. Uh, referees would do that thing as well, where it, they've already spoken to you. And you go on and tug someone, they're given a penalty, say, they can always turn around and say, hey, I told you so. You were warned, absolutely. Well, Shin Tae Yong has never beaten Indonesia, never beaten Thailand, I should say, as coach of Indonesia. He's had uh, five chances to do so, three times with the national team, once with the under-23s, once with the under-19s. Three draws and two losses so far. This represents his first real opportunity to do so. Witan, a lovely exchange of passes there, and Asnawi hits it over. Uh, very slick going forward on the right. Now they've got that extra attacker in a sense. Asnawi being invited to push forward with the advantage that they have. So you've got Asnawi and yeah, Jakob was very comfortable attacking anyway. Mitan just peeling off. I think they cut back into Asnawi. They've had some very decent opportunities today, haven't they, Indonesia? Uh, the finishing touch. Uh, not there. Well, here come Thailand. A good opportunity here. Ekanit. Nadeo pulls off the save or just does just enough. Yeah, Rianto clears. Real danger for Indonesia. Quick break forward. It's a very good run by Supanan. He keeps himself on site. Receives that uh, lovely pass played over the top. Goalkeeping. Adeo had to be quick to rush out and close down the angles. Yeah, did well. It's the first real time he's been called into action here. 72 minutes gone. But this tie side showing uh, not to be trifled with. No, you recall Vietnam. I was just the thinking thing exactly that. that. <laughs> Great minds, Russian. Go on, you finish it off then. No, no, you, I was just going to say, you, you we, complete my we were just talking about <laughs> Vietnam and how even when they went down to yeah. 10. You didn't know that, right? <laughs> didn't really feel it. Wow. This is an interesting move. Tirasen is off, Adesak is on. I wondered whether he'd still he'd try to go with two out-and-out strikers, but he's opted to take his main man off. Yeah, looking to just still maintain the, the, the balance yeah. in that uh, the back four, the midfield four. Fresh legs up front in... Uh, Adisak coming off, keeps uh, Tirasin in a well condition for the challenges mm. that, uh, that lie ahead. Adisak, two tournaments ago, the top scorer in these championships. Not really had too much of a look in since then. Opportunity for him now. Tiraton. Sarac looking to try and apply the pressure here, Thailand. Now on the break, Indonesia. Sadil making the run. Will he get there? No, he won't. Get it on. Alert. This time, anyway. Indonesia come back here. Rahman Erianto. Sayub, uh, Jakub Sayuri. Oh, he's come close on the volley. Had a number of these kind of chances. Oh, he came close. 
than any. Again, another beautiful flowing counter attack from Indonesia. It all starts from Rahmat Irianto winning it in midfield, spotting that gap in the middle, driving through, carrying the ball forward. And the give and go. Again, right idea, wants to hit it across the goalkeeper. Looks for the far post. There's one for three today. Gonna be a double change here. Ricky Kambuaya is very much a regular. He's gonna come on. And uh, there is Mohamed Rafli. Uh, it's Rahmat Arianto who goes off for Kambuaya. Vitan Sulaiman is replaced by Rafli. Yeah, it's a good change to make. I think it, uh, it can be perceived as a slightly more attacking one with Kambuaya on for uh, Rahmat Irianto. Shin Teong perhaps feeling it doesn't quite need that defensive presence of uh, mm. uh, Rahmat Irianto in, in central midfield. Kambuaya will give you that box to box energy as well. He's comfortable carrying it forward through the middle of the, the park. And here they come now, Indonesia. Got some fresh legs on as well. Sadil is one of them. The new man in. Fud Fudley. R roughly, excuse me. Yeah, he's just moved into that central striking role. Dendi has uh, moved over to the left. He was a little bit ineffective, wasn't he, roughly, against uh, Cambodia in the first game. Leading the line. 24-year-old. It's more Arima. To double figures now for his international caps. Yuki Kambuaya. 26, plays for Persib Bando. To his 20s for caps. He really is a mainstay of the side. There's Kambuaya, or rather, Jakub Sayuri. Masnawi goes down. Masnawi quickly gets up. It looked like he was fouled by uh, Tiraton. Here's Clock. Yeah, this is really good from Indonesia. Again, they're all over Thailand. There's no real sort of sense of wanting to sit back and invite that pressure. They want to be in control, they want to be dominant. Want to keep Thailand as far away from their goal <laughs> as possible. Done a pretty good job of it so far. Big roar from the crowd. That's good work by uh, Rafli. Closes down Sasala. It's uh, just interesting the way things have changed so much from the oh first yeah. to the second half. Absolutely. And yeah, obviously the, the red card is uh, is a big moment, moment. But before that as well, Indonesia's approach, yeah. the start of the second half, the was very different from the first. The shackles kind of got loosened, right. didn't they? Regardless of before that sending off anyway, as you mentioned. And for Thailand, that control that they had in possession in the first half suddenly just disappeared. Here's Bordin. It's good work from uh, Jakub Sayuri to help win the ball back. Yeah, they were quite happy just to get the ball here. No one really coming up to challenge for now. Asnawi. Adesak, now board in, 
Saraj takes a shot. It's found its way in off a deflection. Thailand have equalised against the run of play, you'd have to say as well. They're right back in this. Well, that's a straight stroke of luck that they needed. The deflection taking it past Nadeo. But really, Indonesia only have themselves to blame for putting themselves in trouble like that. I think it was Asnawi that gave it away to Adisak. Credit to him for that pressure that he put on. It's taken a big deflection off Kambuaya. Denied there from Manapoking. Sarachu Yen. Oh, is there still more in this game? You just can't write off Thailand. It's only his fourth goal for his country in over 60 appearances. That's almost come from nowhere in a yeah. sense, because yeah. as we said earlier, Indonesia looking dominant in the second half. And again, you, you think back to that goal, it was Indonesia that gave it away, put themselves in trouble. Yeah, they were in a really good position, weren't they? They've had chances as well since that penalty, not put them away. Got to do it all over again. They still have at least 10 minutes. Looks like Thailand are going to bring on Peter Don. Whistle very clearly gone. I think now Peter Don is about to come on. A high boot there on Krit Sada. Well, interesting now, Borlin Pala is going to go off. Pyridon replaces him. Yeah, good change to make. I think uh, Malapoking now realises that there, there's a chance here to take a point on the road in a difficult situation. I think Pyridon in, hopefully allows them to get a bit more control in midfield. You've taken mm. off more of an attacking player and board in. Not that Peridon can't get forward, but he's more of a, a central pre uh, presence in midfield. And good in possession as well. Yeah, point is fine, isn't it? As far as uh, Thailand are concerned. Uh, we can tell you, by the way, in the other game, because Brunei stunningly had the lead there. Cambodia are now in front, 2-1. And it will be Cambodia, Thailand next. Yeah, still, Adisak going strong. Asnawi yes, was there, but so was uh, Fakhruddin. Uh, he, he's had a positive impact since he's come on. Adisak. Adisak. Uh, he's had energy, he's had that fight up front. Helped to create that goal for Thailand. It's just amazing how these momentum shifts. Yeah. Incredible. I was just going to say earlier in terms of, of red cards, and we were talking about Vietnam and Thailand. Yeah. If there are two sides in this region, in Southeast Asia, <laughs> you'd still back to go on and get a result, even playing with yeah. 10. <laughs> in this part of the world, it's those it'll be those two nations. Yeah. The, diff the difference was, it, we mentioned when it happened with uh, Vietnam yesterday, last night, that Vietnam for a little bit, a little while, looked a bit shaky, but otherwise didn't look too overawed by the situation. Uh, didn't. I mean, they needed a couple of really good saves from yeah. uh, Dang Van Lam. Well, that's a nice ball in, isn't it? Oh, Adisak, it's been a threat. Pyridon came steaming in. And again, Adisak, here he is, making a difference. Good idea. Really puts it into that space for Pyridon to go on and atta attack. Well defended. But Vietnam, even in that set, yeah, they needed Van Lam just to go back very quickly yeah, to that. But yeah. in the second half, the approach, oh, so refreshing. Superb. They went out and attacked Malaysia. Th the difference here, Thailand looked uncertain yeah. and overawed for quite a while, didn't they? And could have gone two or three down. They rode their luck a little bit. And as you said, they got a big stroke of it on themselves to get that goal. Yeah, I mean... The, uh, 
Dan and Vietnam, these two nations, just so good. <laughs> it's almost as if uh, the rest of the countries will say, next time, please put out your strongest squads. <laughs> we'll petition for you to start matches with just 10. 10 men. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Tiraton with the corner. Did that went out of play. They'll be so delighted if they can 10 man Thailand can get a point out of this in the GBK. Yeah, he's gonna look at that. As now it is that uh, sells his captain short with that pass. But Adisa, I mean he's his, his work rate was was really good there. He didn't give up on it, smelt an opportunity to cause a few issues for Indonesia. Played it back inside and then the space opened up for Sars to have a go at goal and, and why not? I mean there was nothing else really on for him. Well, danger not over here yet. Panza tried to clear. Here's Sadil. A big stroke of luck with that deflection off uh, Kamboaya, but hey, they'll take it. And playing with 10, you need luck to go your way. Yeah. That's not quite sure there was too much wrong with that challenge from Kamboaya. It's just that. Uh, Pumped into Sarac before you won the ball. That's up, just a little nudge there. Now we're going to get further changes here. Here we go. So Marcelino Ferdinand is going to get a little cameo today. And he was marked out by Manu Poking as one to watch out for. Got to get the uh, old numbers right there first, I think. There we go. 17 is for Thailand, Ekanit. He is going off. Pratama Arhan. Excuse me. Dendi is off. And replaced by Marcelino. There you go. Uh, just uh, confirmation from uh, Mano Bolking that he's happy to settle for a point with Jakapan coming on. Uh, slot into that back line. So it's going to be a 5 uh, a 3 1 for Thailand now. That's for Shin Tae Yong. He wants to go for that winner. Marcelino in with his uh, creativity. Adesak brought down by Jordi Amat. Adesak took exception to that challenge. That was a foul. <laughs> it was a very clear foul. Probably what happened after that. A bit of a knock to the back of uh, Adisak's head. Well, the Amat goes into the book. Oh, suspension for him. Yeah, that's uh, now potentially a very big game. Actually, I'm just going to correct myself now because if this ends one all, this rules out the Philippines, who will play Indonesia. So actually, that particular game, in terms of going through to the next round, has no significance. But of course, Indonesia want to win it to 
trying to apply the pressure on Thailand who play Cambodia. A little pressure they can exert. If that stays one all, by the way. And we'll just have to see how much added time the referee will add on in about minutes from now. Uh, Mano Polkin getting involved with uh, Marcelino. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to do whatever he can. <laughs> Shin Tae-yong is not impressed at all. There he goes. <laughs> well, they spoke about each other in just glowing terms yeah. before, but it, uh, it all goes out the window once the match starts. Oh, was a, a bit of a kick out as well from uh, Fakhruddin. Quick apology after that. It's quite lucky he didn't connect with Adisak. In some ways, perhaps uh, a bit of a wake-up call today for Thailand? Uh, yeah, I mean... Cruising through this, this tournament so far, weren't they? Yeah, but I, I, to be fair, I think they would have expected a tough game. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, I don't think they sort of came into this thinking it was going to be a stroll. Mm. I think, you know... Shin <laughs> <laughs> Tae-yong, furious at the moment. Let's give Sas like a little pat on the back when... Yeah, it's just uh, clarifying <laughs> that he's more upset with the referee. Yes. Then, uh, then Sasalak. I have to say the the Korean coaches are very good value for <laughs> just observing their behaviour on the sidelines. Uh, handball there from uh, Adisak. Says he went down. There's Tiratot. You know, and, and, and to be fair to Thailand, you know, I, I don't think it was a case of them sort of needing a, a wake-up call, you know. They they were impressive in their first two games oh as yeah. well, even though they were far better than the, than the two sides they faced. But still, they, they, they played at a re the really the right sort of attitude mm. and a very good tempo. As uh, Jakapan's given away the free kick for <laughs> this foul on uh, Kambuaya. These moments where the quality really needs to come through. Whoever's taking this, whether it's Klok or Pratama Arhan. Could potentially be either scoring the winner or setting one up. Here we go with Clark, and that's gonna have to take something quite special from there. Yeah, uh, Kittipong had that well covered. And see it coming from a long way out. Comfortable save in the end. said in the lead up to this game they didn't want to disappoint their fans having seen almost the full context of this match there will be disappointed yeah. fans though won't they the yeah Asian I mean if it, if it stays this way I think it feels like it will feel like a missed opportunity for Indonesia yeah. Thailand will be happy will be delighted with everything they've gone of course you know away from home difficult conditions playing with 10 quite a bit of the second half Having to come back from a goal down, they'll be delighted with this Thailand. But for Indonesia, it's an opportunity miss. You know, mm. a chance to take the win against Thailand, put yourself in a good position to finish top of the group. And avoid potentially what you would think is the best team in Group B. Yeah. In theory. Well, they rode out, stormed, and they, Mano Polking will be delighted with that one. Just a few seconds left now. And we're going to have one more chance for either one of these sides. Oh, 
Well, this was built up as a, a big heavyweight clash here. Manapolking, his side came here knowing that a win would put them through comfortably. They got a little bit of a rude awakening just towards the end of the first half when they probably should have gone down after Witan Sulaiman's effort. A penalty ascending off as well just after the halftime break. And it's two points missed for you, is it, Indonesia? Uh, yeah, for Indonesia, I think in terms of the context of the game and how it's gone, a bit of a missed opportunity for Indonesia. Thailand will be absolutely delighted with this. Still, in terms of the overall group, bigger picture-wise, it's it's a point more than the than both sides came in yep. with, and uh, you know Indonesia at least uh, haven't lost this game in front of their in front of their home fans, and they're still in a really good position to go on and progress from the group. It ends here at the Galora Bung Karno Stadium. Indonesia won, Thailand won. It does. As we'll see the picture shortly in the table. What that means that. Recriminations, post-match analysis amongst the players. They know they had a superb opportunity here to deal a bit of a blow to one of the pre-tournament favourites. That hasn't happened, unfortunately for them. But Shin Taeyong now got a bit more of a smile on his face. He can be proud of his of his charges. Yeah, no, I think they put in a really good performance. Uh, Two different sides of uh, Indonesia that we saw in the first half. One a little bit more concerned with uh, making sure they were tight at the back, uh, defensively secure. Then the second half, were more aggressive. They, they pushed higher up the pitch. They put uh, Thailand under a little bit more pressure. And they got the rewards for that at approach in the second 45. So, you know, I, I think he will be happy with uh, a number of uh, aspects of this performance from Indonesia. Not happy with the result in the end. Mm. And not happy with the fact that it was his own side, essentially, that put yeah. themselves in trouble and then essentially gave this win away. Yeah, he talked about finishing in the lead-up to this match and how he wanted that to improve. Perhaps on another day, that could have changed the results. His wait to beat Thailand continues. But Indonesia have played well overall here today. As it ends, one all between them and Thailand. with your goal in second half but what happened after that I don't know we we dropped too much back uh, we start to doubt a little bit with the ball we was not confident too much in the feet we should finish also the chance we have to be more clinical and then yeah if, if they counter us and you see the goal they score then of course everybody start to get nervous and unfortunately we couldn't take the the win at home what I what I think we deserve and with this draw result, what is your expectation about for the next last game against Philippines in the group phase? Yeah, I think because we draw today, it's about goal difference. And um, they have one goal more than us at the moment. So we have to score in Philippines more goals to make sure we are top of the table because this was our target. Unfortunately, if we won today, we will be first. But uh, unfortunately, 1-1 uh, and... Uh, we have to go on the next game to win uh, with a lot of goals. Okay, thank you, Carl. Thank you. You have uh, scored goal in second half. Can you tell us about your goal? 
ก็ขอให้บอกความรู้สึกที่เรายิงประตูตีเสมอได้ครับก็รู้สึกดีใจครับที่ที่ทำประตูได้ครับเราลงมาในครึ่งหลังเนี่ยเราเสียประตูไปก่อนแล้วก็เหลือสิบคนครับเราเราหลังจากนั้นเราก็สู้สู้กันในในในรูปแบบของเรานะครับก็อดทนแล้วก็รอเวลาแล้วก็ทุกคนก็สู้กันในฐานะของทีมครับก็ขอบคุณผู้เล่นทุกคนด้วยครับที่ที่สู้กันอย่างอย่างเต็มที่ครับวันนี้ First of all he would like to thank you for all teammates to be to be patient to wait to wait until the the score the score the equalizing goal after we we concede the early goal in the second half but we be patient and finally we got the score back Indonesia have the crowd behind them Indonesia have the crowd behind them and that is affected your gameplay or ก็บรรยากาศแฟนบอลในสนามวันนี้มันเป็นแรงกดดันกับเราหรือเปล่าก็แน่นอนครับแน่นอนบรรยากาศแฟนบอลอินโดนีเซียเข้ามามันก็มันแน่นอนอยู่แล้วมันมีความกดดันอยู่แล้วแต่ว่าโอเคพวกเราก็พยายามที่จะเล่นเกมของเราเล่นเล่นในรูปแบบของเราครับก็เราก็สามารถทําได้ดีในครึ่งแรกนะครับแต่ว่าโอเคครึ่งหลังเรามาเสียลูกโทษไปก่อนครับซึ่งซึ่งมันก็ทําให้เราลําบากมากขึ้นแล้วก็มาเหลือสิบคนครับแต่ว่าเราเราไม่ได้โทษพี่แคมป์นะครับเราเราสู้กันในฐานะของทีมครับแล้วก็ก็เก็บผลเสมอเก็บหนึ่งคะแนนครับก็มันก็เป็นเป็นถือว่าแฟร์แล้วสำหรับนันนี้ Actually uh, the the fans the crowd here is put the pressure on us by the way we can do very well on our plan in the first half but eventually in the second half we concede a goal but finally we we try to focus on our job and try hard try hard and finally we got the score back Okay thank you Mr. for your time